Hey, this is Mike McAdam from Gen X Guitar. Today, I'm going to show you Jimmy Page's secret jazz hack. I'm going to show you a jazz hack that Jimmy Page does frequently in his playing. It's very easy to apply. So, I'm not sure if this came directly from this, but apparently Jimmy Page took some guitar lessons with John McLaughlin in the late 60s. So maybe it came from there, maybe it came from listening to other sources. This idea is actually used in a lot of classic rock guitarists playing, including the breakdown solo in Can't You Hear Me Knocking that Mick Taylor does, or the long solo in Do You Feel Like We Do, where Peter Frampton uses the same idea. But today we're focused on Jimmy Page, and this is something you could hear in the live version of Dazed and Confused. This gets used a lot, and the song remains the same movie, as well as live versions of Over the Hills and Far Away. Um, I've even heard it on uh, live versions of the Immigrant song. So it's a cool little thing that you can add to your playing that gives it um, some spice uh, that you can just get a different sound out of. So basically what we're going to do is, today we're going to play it in the key of E minor because there's really that and one other key if you play guitar. Just kind of kidding. Um, but we're going to take a look at the E minor pentatonic scale here at the 12th fret. So what happens is a lot of times we learn that first position E minor pentatonic scale. We start playing around in the box, figuring some things out, but then we want to expand that sound. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to show you two different ways to kind of get there. What this creates is more of a Dorian type of sound. So what I'm going to do is take that E minor pentatonic scale and I'm going to add a D triad on top of it. And that's just going to be this. And if you look at that from a theory perspective, you could call it E Dorian mode, or you could just say we're taking a D chord and playing it over E minor. So in jazz, a lot of times you're not playing scales, you're playing what are called substitute arpeggios, where you're layering one chord over another. And a lot of times, because of the way the chords are broken up, it's going to give it more of an extended sound. So what happens with this D chord is basically we're playing an upper extension triad. So if we look at those notes against an E minor chord, I have the note A, which is the 11th, D, which is the flat seventh, and F sharp, which is the ninth. What's more important with this idea though, is you take it and say, okay, if I'm in a minor key, I can take a major triad a second below and play it over that chord. And that's going to give it a different sound. Now you could say, well, why don't I just play a Dorian mode? You're going to get the same effect, but what happens is it's kind of like math. If you have 2 plus 2 equals 4, 3 plus 1 equals 4, it's two different ways to get the same effect. I remember Larry Carlton saying once that if you play scales, it sounds like this. If you play arpeggios, it sounds like this. So let me show you an example of what this would sound like. So a lot of times what's going to happen is with those notes, they have more tension in them by nature. So a lot of times what happens is that tension wants to resolve. So an easy thing you can do is you could play your E minor pentatonic scale, drift into this D chord, drift back, because you're going to have notes in that scale that are going to resolve in either direction. So I'm playing kind of my classic regular blues rock licks, right? <laughs> then I can kind of add some of that D sound. And just move between the two of them. So what happened was I moved out of the regular E minor scale for a while, played a little of that D chord, and then moved back to it. You can actually take D chords anywhere. So I have D here. And just connect them to your minor pentatonic scales. You can add another octave onto it. You can add another octave onto it from there. 
Of course, if you run up and down the arpeggio, it's not necessarily going to sound great. But in the beginning, just hearing how those notes sit under the chord or on top of the chord is going to give you an idea of, of how it works. So two typical ways that this is used, and I actually think the origin of using this idea may come from the song So What by Miles Davis, where it's just a long jam on D minor, and you hear, especially in Miles' solo, which is the first one of the song, you hear him playing a lot of C major triad ideas over the D minor chord. Here's two typical applications where you might hear this. And that's just basically playing the D arpeggio as an arpeggio over the E minor chord. The second one would be more typical of what you hear, uh, would hear Page do where you play it in thirds. So in closing, just remember if you have a minor chord, E minor in this case, you can take a major triad, a second below, in this case D, and superimpose it over that E minor chord. I hope you learned from this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.